What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the brand new updated version of Twinmotion in their new preview version that completely changes the user interface. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can access this version from inside of the Epic Games launcher, just like you would anything else inside of Twinmotion. And in this case, to get the version with the new user interface, you wanna make sure that you download Twinmotion 2023.1 Preview 2. So if you open up the 2022 version, obviously it's gonna have the old interface. And so when you do that, um, for you, there's probably gonna be a button that says install. Once you've installed this, you can click on the launch button. And so while we wait for this to load, note that I am planning on updating my course in order to um, reflect this new version. That's just gonna take me a little bit of time. If you do wanna learn how to use Twinmotion in the meantime, you can check that out at therenderingessentials.com slash Twinmotion course. Okay, and so when you open up this new version, um, it's gonna start looking something like this, which is something we already saw on the preview version before. So you've got like your day and night skies, you've got all your different uh, templates that you can use. I'm gonna go ahead and use the day and night skies um, just as kind of an example file. Okay, and so when you open this up, this is what the new user interface is going to look like. So um, you're gonna notice there are some similarities to the way that it looked before, but mostly everything has been um, kind of redesigned um, in order to kind of reduce the size of the icons that are in here and make everything a little bit more accessible. And so your 3D workspace isn't all that different, right? You've got the same options in here that you did before, but you can see how they've moved your path tracer, which by the way, is not working in my new version right here. Um, I've got a new computer on the way, so I'm just gonna test it when that gets here. So it tells me that DirectX 12 is disabled. If I actually go up into my preferences like this, um, DirectX 12 is marked as enabled, so I'm not really sure what's causing that. But notice how they've taken this bar, which was down below and they moved it up to the top of the page. Um, so now this is at the top of the page at all times and you can use this in order to access the different tools. Your library is pretty much the same um, other than now you click on these buttons down at the bottom to pop up different windows, right? So I can toggle my scene, my properties, all of those by clicking on the buttons, bu buttons on the bottom of the page. So um, bringing things in to Twinmotion is pretty much the same. Right, you can just take this and just bring like a chair in, for example, if you wanna do that. Um, you just drag that into the scene. What's really changed is just the way that everything looks and how you access everything. Notice how if you wanna do things like importing models from outside of Twinmotion, um, you now do that by clicking on this button right here and that's gonna pop up a window. So you don't just have this big window sitting in here with giant icons anymore. Click on this in order to manage different things. Now, um, notice how, for example, let's say that we wanted to populate some trees in here. So um, what I can do is I can click on the populate button. That's gonna give me the ability to do things like placing foliage, create your paths or your urban. But notice how, again, that pops up in a little window on the right-hand side of the page, instead of taking up a bunch of your viewport um, down below. So let's say that I did want to bring in trees, maybe with just like the paint tool. What I would do is I can click on that and notice how that's now over here on the right hand side of the page. And then I can click, drag in whatever trees I want. So say I wanted these trees right here and then I can use this to paint those trees in. So the paint function is now over here on the right hand side of the page instead of being at the bottom of the page. Um, so media mode is a window that you can pop up Right, so if I click in here, notice how this is allowing me to go between those different templates that are inside of my scene. So I can use this in order to get my different looks. But then notice how now everything inside of media mode, and so now everything about media mode is off to the right hand side, and I can use this to adjust my different things. So let's say for example, I'm gonna go ahead and right click in order to toggle this paint tool off. But now, like my weather shows up over here on the right hand side like this, and I can use these sliders in order to set my weather up. So my location settings, my HDRI settings, other things like that, those are now over here on the right-hand side of the page as well. And so remember that you can save these different settings in here. Notice how you are in media mode and it kind of shows you this. If you click out of media mode, but you still wanna change things about the way your scene looks, now that's located inside of the ambiance setting inside of your outliner right here. So notice how when I do that, I can use this to adjust the direction of my sun. I can adjust my camera settings, so things like my field of view, my other camera effects, like my vignette, 
my lens flare. You can adjust those using the sliders on the right hand side over here. Um, and then you can also click on this button right here in order to change your rendering settings. So basically what they've done is they've taken all of this and they've made all the icons smaller and they moved them off to the side, which again to me is a really great move because this just looks better. Um, it feels a lot more professional working in the tool. Now, best as I can tell, the settings all seem to be pretty much the same. It's just the way that you access things. And again, like your export settings, those are all going to be on the right hand side of the page as well. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to export uh, maybe the sunrise right here. So I could come in here. I could adjust my sky dome a little bit like this. But then if I wanted to export it, I would just click on the export button right here and that's going to pop up the export window. And notice how I can click in here in order to export my image. I can set my format, um, really whatever you want in here. So if you wanted like a JPEG or whatever file format, you could definitely do that. And then you can click on the plus button in order to select an image. So in this case, I'm going to select this sunrise right here. Notice how as soon as that's selected, I can come down to the bottom of the page and click on start export. Then you can pick the folder and you can click on select and that's how you're going to export your images. And so then if I open up my image, this is going to look something like this. Note that I didn't do the path tracing. I just did a quick raster export. Okay. So a couple other things to note. So first off, now your material management is going to happen over here on the right hand side of the page. And so the way that that works is let's say that we were to apply like a concrete material to this right here. So notice how when we do that, if we select that material, and this kind of auto selected, but you can use this to select your materials. Notice how now your tools for editing materials show up on the right hand side of your page. So let's say for example, that I wanted to make this smaller, I can bring the scale down using this function right here. So I can also adjust the rotation of my objects. And again, instead of that happening at the bottom of your page, that's happening over here on the right hand side of the page. So other things are going to get adjusted in here as well. So for example, like if you wanted to load a roughness map, um, you could just click in here, click on this texture option, and this is where you're going to be able to open up a roughness map. So obviously this doesn't have one associated with this particular block, but um, you can adjust that in here. And you can also click on these and type in values if you want to do that. So your material editing is now going to happen in a window on the right hand side of the page right here. And note that for different things, um, the different options are going to show up in here, right? So for example, let's say that we were to bring a person in. So we're going to bring a person model in. Notice how the person model, all of the options for the person model are going to show up on the right hand side of the page. So you've got your different poses, other things like that. So whatever kind of model you have picked in here, the kind of options that are associated with that are going to show up over here. So for this one, right, the box doesn't really have anything. For the person, it's got the clothes and things like that. For the trees, um, in this case, this is painted vegetation. Now, if I was to just drag a tree in like this one right here, this is where you're going to have the option to adjust the tint of the leaves, the age of the tree, other things like that. So now all of your options for different things are going to pop up automatically on the right hand side of the page when you want to edit them. Now, one other thing to note about your materials is notice how those are going to show up down below down here as well inside of the material manager. So not only can you drag these in from the library, you can also manage the materials that are in your model by clicking on this materials button right here. So notice how I can click on those. I can drag them in and apply them to different things, other things like that. Okay. And so another adjustment that they've added is you can also adjust the interface scale. So like, for example, say that you still want all of these icons to be smaller. Well, you can go into edit preferences and under appearance, there's now options in here to adjust your interface scale. So if I wanted these all to be as small as possible so that my viewport is as big as possible, I could set my interface scale down to 75%. Notice how when I do that, all of these icons and words are going to get smaller inside my viewport. Alternatively, if you need some bigger text, um, you can come in here and you can adjust your appearance up as well. So notice how when we do that, those are going to start to get larger. Now, one thing to note about that is that rapidly, at least on my monitor, which isn't super big, um, that rapidly starts taking up more and more of your space. So just be aware of that. Um, if you are going to use that for like the larger um, text and things like that, you're probably going to spend a lot of time toggling all these windows off by clicking on these buttons right here. So in addition to the new user interface, they've got some other functions in here as well. Like for example, if you go to edit 
preferences, now under your quality, you've got an option to adjust your viewport resolution scaling. Basically what that's going to do is that's going to um, decrease the visual quality in your viewport. So if I bring this down to 50%, for example, notice how my quality is gonna go down, but my frame rate goes way up because it's not as visually intensive. So now you've got these kind of like 30, 50, 70, 100% options for what's shown in your viewport in order to improve your performance. Um, so if you have a slower computer or something like that, you can use this in order to make that adjustment. So notice how if I adjust that up, my viewport quality gets better, my frames per second goes down. Okay, so there are some other features um, that have been added to the path tracer, which I haven't been able to test because I'm getting that DirectX 12 error. Um, I'm gonna try this again when I get my new computer later this week. Um, but now the path tracer supports things like decals, which I know people have been waiting for for a long time, um, as well as height fog, um, better atmospheric rendering, things like that. Um, it also looks like you can use SLI in order to link multiple GPUs together. If you are trying to do some uh, kind of crazy rendering or something like that, you can use that in order to get some additional power. Um, I actually like this feature, which is the credit export for Sketchfab assets. Um, basically, you go to File, Export Credits, and that's going to export a a CSV file that will actually contain the license information for any Sketchfab assets you use. So instead of you having to go through and like make notes in Notepad, which is what I've been doing, you can export that CSV file, which to me, since you do need to do a lot of attribution for Sketchfab assets, is actually extremely valuable. And so we do have some other quick changes in here as well. So scaling at container level um, allows you to select a container and you can scale everything in the container all at once. So you've got a higher quality reflections option, which is something that you need to um, basically use this when you import a model um, and you can bring in the full precision normals. Note that this is going to um, increase some memory consumption. So they've also improved the IES lights and the UV mapping of primitives. Um, but the big change in this version is definitely that new user interface. So I will note this is more of like a look and feel update in the sense that the user interface has changed, things are in different places, but the way things work is still generally the same. Um, it's just that the sliders might look a little bit different um, or they might be in a different place, but fundamentally the way that Twin Motion is doing things isn't significantly different, at least in my opinion. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below about that, what you think about the new user interface. Uh, one other note, I am going to be working to update my course um, to reflect this new user interface, that's obviously gonna be a little bit time consuming, so I will get that done as soon as possible. But like I said, leave a comment below, let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.